Welcome to the EG Success Mindset Podcast. I'm so glad and so grateful that you could join me today. And I'm thrilled to have you. Um, if you're new to my channel, I want to say thank you so much for taking time out to listen to me. Uh, whether you're listening or watching me on YouTube or any other channels for that matter, whether it's Spotify, whether it's iTunes or Amazon, I want to say thank you so, so much. I appreciate you and I don't take you for granted. Now, in this podcast, as you know, we dive into personal development and personal transformation information, bringing you insightful uh, discussions, expert reviews, and so much more, which includes a uh, book series review. Once again, thank you so much. Remember to subscribe, remember to share, comment, but more importantly, apply the information. In today's episode, I want to share with you something that is primarily a driving force in my life. For many years, I've been obsessed by the question, why do we do what we do? Now, before I dive into today's episode, I want to tell you a testimony of mine. On the 21st of May this year, that's just over a month ago, I was in a car accident. My son and I were driving from church after a wonderful service. We popped into somewhere where he was going to see the youth, um, had a conversation with them, and then we were on our way back home. He was driving his vehicle, a convertible uh, Mazda Miata, and we didn't have the roof on. So it was a beautiful sunny day, and we were just enjoying the ride from church. In fact, I just called my wife, let her know I'll be home in a few minutes. So she had prepared some meal. Anyway, little do we know that we are going to encounter a life-changing experience. As you can see in the footage here, this is the recovery moment. We have come back to recover the vehicle. Thank God that even after demolishing the bus stop, tumbling twice, landing upside down we escaped with very minor scratches and it's only by god's grace and mercy that we escaped the police and all the professionals were amazed so that that's very lucky to have escaped and we hit a bus stop tumbled over twice and landed upside down now mind you it's a convertible car no roof was on we tumbled over twice and landed upside down and I'm so grateful because within 10 minutes of the accident, the emergency response service was there. So I'm grateful for the NHS uh, in, in the UK. And I know there's a lot of issues around the ambulance stuff, but hey, as far as I'm concerned, that for me was very, very responsive. Now, fast forward, believe it or not, we escaped at no serious injuries. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, that was a divine intervention. Considering the odds, that was divine intervention. And on that day, I could only ask myself one question. If I have been given another chance to live today, because on that day, I knew for sure I have been given another chance to live, what am I going to do differently? On that day, May the 21st, I made a commitment. I am going to continuously organize all the information that I know and share it with as many people as I can. And if at least I can impact one or two or three or a thousand or a million people before I leave, then I would have considered that a life worth living. As Emerson said, if one person has breathed easier because of you, you have lived. Let me get into today's content that I prepared for you. And I asked myself a question over the years, I've been studying a lot, just trying to ask and understand this mystery called life. And through my research, I found so I, I discovered that there are seven areas, seven areas of life that every single one of us needs to master in order to live a fulfilled life. So without further ado, I'm going to share with you my screen and I'm going to go step by step with no particular order and we're going to have a discussion. Uh, and if you find this information useful, give it a like, uh, give it a like, share with someone, uh, have a conversation with someone, make a comment and let me know how you are implementing this information in your life. So I'm going to share with you my screen. So let us go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And it will be also nice to know where, if you let me know where you are 
where you are watching from. That would be very helpful. So let's go. So we're going to talk about the seven areas of life. I'm going to be talking to you about the seven areas of life. Now, just to give you a heads up, over the next coming days, I have interviews prepared for you. And these are individuals that I have uh, I have learned from, people who have succeeded in their own unique ways, people who have overcome some odds, and they are making massive differences and massive changes, not only in their lives, but in their local community. And some of them are expanding their reach globally. Now, remember, success is not a destination. It is a journey. It is how we are evolving every day, day in, day out. So let's go into today's content. And I hope that you are going to find value. Uh, I'm sure you're going to find value in this information. So the seven areas of life. Now, I love working with business owners and I help them develop mental attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors necessary for success. So we're going to look at the seven areas. It's just an overview of the seven areas of life that I believe every single one of us to have a complete fulfilled life. We need to be able to be working and balancing these areas or at least understanding where we are in every single one of these areas. If you have a family, that makes you a business owner and a team leader. Because at the end of the day, your family is your immediate team that you're leading. So it's imp this information will be valuable to yourself. So, And I look at helping people develop mental attitudes, beliefs, and behaviors that are necessary for success. I've been obsessed by studying people who are succeeding, people who are getting better results than myself, and ask myself, what are they doing that I could learn and I could do and implement? So here are the seven areas. Your physical health and vitality, financial mastery, relationship enrichment, spiritual growth, emotional well-being, vocational fulfillment, and your social connection. So if you lack in one of these areas, you are going to feel a little bit off. So if you're lacking in your vitality and your health, you're not going to, to appreciate or to live life to the full. If your relationships are not being enriched, if your family has issues, if your brothers and sisters and, and siblings are struggling and you're struggling to, the, to communicate with them, you are going to, you're not going to feel life is fulfilling. Now, I believe the first place, the first area that all of us needs to be keen and in tune with is our physical health and vitality. Now, why am I saying physical health and vitality? We are spiritual beings having a physical experience. You and I, we are the only creatures on earth who are out of our environment. Every other creature out there is in its perfect natural habitat. Birds have feathers. Dogs have fur. Every single animal created on earth lives in its own natural, God-given habitat. What about man? Man is the only person who has the capacity to rearrange the nature around him to suit his desire. We are the only ones who make clothing. We are the only ones who create tools and advanced tools. We go to the expect even far off to creating tools to destroy ourselves. So we are spiritual beings having a physical experience. So therefore, the house that you and I dwell in, the body, if it's out of sync, everything else becomes a bit of a problem. So that's one. Nurturing the, your body, therefore, is the foundation of your well-being. The importance of vitality affects your quality of life. And what do you do and what can you do about it? Practice nutrition or, you know, practices for nutrition, eating the right food. Now, I'm from Kenya. And when I came to this country, I used to tell my wife, I'm not a rabbit. I don't eat green vegetables. I eat refined food, i.e. meat and carbs. How ignorant I was. And I'm so glad that she never gave up on encouraging me to eat right. She introduced me to salads and, and supplements and so on. And I look back and I think, wow, that was a God sent lady. Exercise. Do you t are you taking physical exercise? Do you go for a walk? Are you stretching? Are you breathing right? What about rest? Do you sleep enough? Or are you chasing money? Are you chasing wealth? Do you actually sleep and rest? Because without sleeping, without rest, without proper nutrition, your body 
begins to age faster. So this is right. How about emotional well-being? Now I've worked in the mental health hospital, and the, one of the questions that I was always asking myself and having conversations with some of the service users was to interview them or to inquire of how their life led them to where they were at that point. Now, let's be honest, life can be very, very challenging. There are certain circumstances that some of us don't have the capacity or the, the resilience to overcome. And, you know, sometimes it's not our fault. It's not your fault. Now, we can dive into the biochemistry. We can dive into the DNA. We can dive into inheritance. And maybe we'll cover that in another time. But today, this is just an overview of what you can do. Prioritizing mental health is a cornerstone of personal growth. Because remember, what you perceive is how you see the world. If you change how you think and see things, the things you see change. Right? So it's important then for, to ask yourself, how do I process the information that's coming to me? Do I get angry? Why am I getting angry? Why am I aggressive? Why am I directly aggressive? Am I passive aggressive? Am I fearful? Where did that come from? What can I do about it? Quick story. In primary school, I used to be terrified. Well, my dad uh, did the best he could with what he knew how to, but um, I think he was lacking in some parenting techniques. Looking back, I realized he was undergoing through massive stresses. Maybe given the environment he was in, social standing, his upbringing, I probably would have done the same, if not worse. So I grew a very fearful child. It was bad. But I thank God that I came across personal development information through prayer and studying and researching and practicing and practicing and practicing. I've been able to start to shift my life to where I no longer feel certain anxieties. Now, I've helped many people overcome anxieties as well, just by focusing on their mental well-being techniques of managing stress, fostering positivity, and enhancing self-awareness, cultivating resilience, clarity, and emotional intelligence. This is big. Fear is all over us. But what if we dive within and ask ourselves, can we change how we feel? Can we begin to change and shift the way we process the information? And the answer is an absolute yes. Now, vocational fulfillment, this is to do with your job. Finding purpose in work or finding work that's purposeful. What you are created to do, because you are the only unique person on the planet Earth, and God enjoys or experiences life through you. So, Finding work that is fulfilling begins by, first of all, looking within. Pursuing a career growth, skill development, and entrepreneurship. Now, vocation of fulfillment, if you're fulfilled in your work, life becomes a bit more full. Life becomes fuller. Now, it doesn't mean because you're fulfilled at work, your bank account is going to work properly. Now, we're going to get to the finance part. But it's important that you find meaning in your work. It's very valuable that you find meaning in the service that you're providing. Balancing professional success with personal fulfillment and contribution. As Solomon said, a man's gift shall make a way for him. What is your gift? And how are you using it in your daily life to serve uh, your brothers and sisters? So finding vocational fulfillment in another aspect that brings meaning to life Financial mastery. This is a big one. Financial mastery. Now, people say money doesn't buy happiness. But I tell you what, poverty doesn't buy happiness either. So which one would you rather? Be poor and happy or be rich and happy? Well, I know what I would choose. So aligning your financial goals with your personal values and purpose is very important. Study the fin gain financial intelligence for yourself. Don't outsource your financial responsibility. Don't outsource it to your wife. Don't outsource it to your mom. Don't outsource it to your kid or to your bank for that matter. Take personal responsibility. And over the next coming, um, I have a few books that I would like to review for you. Um, financial books, personal financial books, some of them in business, 
that will help you begin to organize your financial life in a way that you begin to grow. Now, there's three areas that every single one of us must master when it comes to money. Number one is making it. Number two is keeping it. And number three is multiplying it, right? Some of us know how to make it, but we don't know how to keep it. Some of us know how to make it and to keep it, but we lack the third element, how to multiply it. If you can't make the money, well, clearly you, you are in trouble. If you can make the money, but you can't keep, you, can't, you don't know how to save some, well, you are going to get in trouble sooner or later. Now, if you can make the money and you learn how to save it, find someone who can teach you how to multiply it. But these three aspects complete the financial, uh, let's say the financial triangle that is so vital for your growth and expansion. Strategies, strategies for budgeting, saving, investing, and wealth creation. Now, I'll be speaking to some of my friends. Some of them are doing extremely well. Some of them have made tons of money, and they're helping a lot more people like yourself and myself to create wealth. I have friends in the insurance services, um, people who well, I know for over 15 years, and they have stayed true in that career, and they are, they've helped thousands of people. So I'll be in, interviewing them. So if you have questions, around finance, about budgeting, the meaning of money, different whether it's crypto, gold, silver, uh, normal currencies, trading, let me know and I'll be uh, very happy to get the information that you need to you. And then achieving financial freedom and abundance. Now, the mindset behind money, and there's so many books written about this, one of the best one being Think and Grow Rich, right? He talks about that if you, the mindset must be belief. You must believe if you're going to create wealth. You must believe. Now, not to sound all religious, but what did Jesus say in the book of John? That whatsoever you pray for your father, believe that you have it and you shall have it. So again, Think and Grow Rich says, the state of mind must be belief. Jesus says, you have to believe that you have what you're asking for. Now, I hope over time I'll be able to help you bridge the gap so that you can understand that money is a reward you receive, but you've got to believe that you're worthy. You have to believe that you're worthy of financial reward. Relationship enrichment. Now, this is the place where families come in. This is the place where uh, your normal friendships Come in, partnerships. No man is an island. And regardless of how much issues you may have had in your past, it is very, very necessary to learn to forgive. Forgive and let go. And begin changing the relationship, first of all, with your own self. I'll be talking about self-image uh, over the coming weeks. There's a fantastic book by uh, Dr. Maxwell Maltz, the psych talking about psychocybernetics, and he talks about the self-image. Did you know that there's a self-image that drives you to behave the way you behave? And most of us don't even have a clue. We just say, this is how I am. This is who I am. Are you? Do you really know who you are? Do you have a clue who you are? Anyway, effective communication, conflict resolution, and building trust in relationships. These are life skills. And I'm glad that you've joined me today because we'll be expanding and expanding in these areas. Now, if you're lacking in this area, you could be doing very well in your finance. You could be doing very well in your physical well-being. You could be doing very well, in fact, even in your emotional well-being. But if you lack in, in, in relationships, your life is always going to feel empty to a certain extent. Now, Wallace D. Wattles says, wealth, the riches that we gain, we find the best fulfillment in them by sharing them with those that we love. But if there is a breakdown in communication, if there is a breakdown in appreciation as far as the relationship is concerned, we are going to struggle, right? Social connections. Now, love what my friend uh, Janet Wainaino, Janet Mwangi says, Make networks that work. So within your social networks, do you have a network that works? Do you have a network that you can work with and is serving you and you're serving them? 
contributing positively towards society and community, embracing diversity, empathy, and social responsibility, advocating for justice, equality, and human rights. Now, almost sounds like a politician, right? Especially in this season of um, elections all over the world. But at the end of the day, if you think about it, there's only one race on the earth. That's the human race. There's no black race and white race and Asian race. These are just geographical locations or skin pigmentation. Behind this skin, we are all the same. In fact, you've never seen a black person. Look at that. That's how black looks like. Neither have you ever seen a white person. That's how white looks like, right? So the question is, why do we begin to change and separate and cut up? And I think whenever we start introspecting and asking whether we are the same or what we share in commonality or in similarity, those barriers begin to break down. But it takes courage. It takes courage to build a social network. Now, technology has made the world a very small place, but yet we seem to be the most divided than ever before. Statistics are saying about 40, about 41 to 49 percent of people in the workplace are lonely. How is that possible in today's world? 49 percent, that's almost 50 percent of people in the workplace are lonely. Now, if you talk to young people, most of them are feeling lonely. They're feeling alone. Even though we are surrounded by technology, we can contact people on the phone instantly. We can face message one another. But yet we have we have not really gotten into our heart and connect for the right purpose. So I want to invite you to begin to uh, begin to start shifting some of these things in your own life. Now, spiritual growth is the other area. Spiritual growth. Now, I used to think I am not a spiritual person, you know, or some, some of us think, you know, some people are more spiritual than others. That's a fallacy. That's an error in processing. Why do I say so? Because I am not body. I am not my body. I say this is my body. I am not arm. I am not earnest. That's my name. You have a name. You have a body. But you're not your body. You're not your name. Who are you? Who are you? You are conditioned spirit. I.e. You are the breath of God in a physical body. So we are all spiritual. You and I are spiritual. The differences is, or the differences fall in within our spiritual awareness. We are in this spiral of knowing, of waking up. I love uh, the saying that says, we fall as humanity, we raise, or we fall as a group, we raise individually. When you start asking the right questions, your mind starts opening up. You start seeing and hearing things differently and therefore you become a bit more connected. But I don't believe that there's somebody who's not spiritual. We are all spiritual. How we process the information is very different. So when it comes to the spiritual growth then, what am I on about? Is the connection with the divine, connection with God or the higher purpose, the inner wisdom. Jesus himself said, if you believe and follow my commandments, and follow my teachings, and you become my disciples, learn, follow me, do as I do. My Father and I will love you and come and dwell in you. So then the spirit stuff is not out here, it's within. It's the stuff that we find inside. And Jesus said, close the external door and go into your private closet. Speak to your Father who is in secret. Isn't that amazing? Cultivating mindfulness, gratitude, and inner peace. This is you going within. If you don't go within, you will go without. If you don't go within, you will go without. Exploring spiritual practices and personal growth journeys. Now, your call is individual. It is private. It is unique to you. Only you can answer your call. No one else can answer your call for you. Which means, if you're going to walk with God, that's going to be you and God. But above all, he will come to you in person. So it's a journey that um, every single one of us needs to engage in personally. So the seven areas of life is just to offer a, a holistic roadmap 
for personal development and empowerment. By nurturing each one of these seven areas, you can achieve balance, fulfillment, and lasting success. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe, and share. See you next time.